Hello everyone and welcome to Exceed Learning. In this video, we're gonna show you how you can create a custom M function that is gonna clean a really ugly and messy table structure. And then we're gonna use that function to iterate through multiple Excel files and connect to specific sheets of those Excel files and clean them in the same fashion. Uh, we're gonna use quite a bit of tricks and quite a bit, bit of tips. So this is gonna be a really educational one. So first let's get familiar with the data. Uh, let's open a central Excel. And inside of central Excel, we can see that this is the worksheet that we want to uh, connect to. And we can see that the data is really messy. First, we have this fill down areas. Then we have these two rows, which need to be combined and then I'm pivoted and at the end we need to pivot these uh, values because these are uh, final values and needs to and each of them needs to have its own separate column. Uh, we're going to show you a three step process of creating first a function using a single source then iterating or then filtering all the sources so that only tables that need to enter the function uh, survive and lastly, you have to invoke the custom function upon all those remaining uh, tables. So let's start by connecting to a single source. We're gonna connect to a central file. So let's connect to central file. And we're gonna use this central and let's go to transform data. So the idea is to create a custom function. We will not use this uh, create a function feature because I tend to, it tends to be not as, as flexible as I wish. So we're gonna use the custom way. First, uh, every time you, you are gonna create a new function, I always add another, a step after the navigation one, which I call the starting point. So let's call this step a start step. And now let's see what we need to do with the data. First we need to eliminate three rows. We're gonna remove top rows, number three. And now we would, what we would need to do, we would need to uh, tra transpose. So we would need to transpose, merge these two columns, and then again, transpose. What this, uh, this, this is an issue if you have a large data set, if you have lots of rows, then transpose is gonna be a slow operation. So we're gonna show you how you can just keep the top two rows, transpose them, unpivot them, and then merge them or uh, uh, pen them back to the original source. So we're gonna do that. First, let's keep top rows. We're gonna keep top two rows. So we are now, uh, we have now eliminated all the remaining rows and this time the transpose will be lightning fast. Next, what we need to do, we need to do fill down, then merge. So let's merge, separator will add some semicolon. Okay, and then we need to do another transpose. Now this step holds the new merged uh, or new combined uh, names of the columns. We need to append the remaining of the rows, which is basically something coming from the start starting uh, section and then we have to remove top five rows to get the remaining rows so we're going to do the following we're going to insert another step after and instead addressing the previous step which is something that uh, power query does automatically we're going to address the starting step so we're going to address the starting step and now what we have we have transpose table the values or, or the, the result of the transpose table step in this variable. And now we're gonna move forward with the, with the script. So now we're gonna remove top five rows. And this gives us the, the remaining, the, the bottom part of the, of the columns. And we need to append these names to it. What we can do, we can use a table.combine uh, function table.combine function receives tables as lists so we need a list operator so we have this list operator and the first table that we're going to input is 
the transpose table one. So we're going to input transpose table one as the first uh, first table, and the second table is going to be the result of the function removed top rows. After we combine this, confirmed it, now we receive uh, this table appended to the result of the removed top rows table. And now from the, from there on, we can move the script. So what we need to do, we need to uh, use first row as a header, then we need to fill this down, then we need to right select first two columns, right click on pivot other columns, and now these two, we need to split them by delimiter, we're going to use semicolon, OK, and lastly we need to call the, rename the columns. So these are values, this is a product, and this is type. Okay, and the last thing that we need to do, the values of this column should be in their separate columns. So we're going to use pivot column for that. And we, we need to say which column is the value column. It's the value column. And after we confirm, now this is the table that we want to receive. So starting from all this, start, starting point, all these tabs were necessary so that we get to the appropriate or the optimal data structure. So the first step is finished. Now we need to transform this query into a function. And we won't use this create function feature. Instead, we're going to use home and let's go to advanced editor and create a function on our own. Above the let expression, we're going to input a variable. We're going to call this input table as table, table, and then we're going to input it in which place. So everything I supply to this function as an input table should start at a specific point in this uh, query. And then from there on, the function will pick up and clean those structures. So does it need to be at the source level, uh, as a, a source step? No, because source step will always change. We won't delete it. We'll just comment it. I'll explain later on why we do that. It will also not come at the part of central sheet because central will become east, south, and west. But we are sure that this input table will fly into the starting position. So everything I input at the starting position, the remaining of the script will apply to it. Now, why do I comment? Because if I do some mistakes in my code, in my function, I would potentially need to transform it back to, back to the query. And this way, I can simply uh, comment out. So if I do click on done, this becomes a function, which I will call fx clean. But in case I made some mistake in the function and it's not operating uh, the way I want it to, I can do, go to advanced editor and do the reverse. I can comment the function part and then uncomment this part and I need to know that I have to change the central sheet to become uh, the starting point. After I click done, the function is back a query, which I can then alter or use this applied step pane to further enhance the, the function. Now let's bring it back to the, uh, to the function. So we need to do this. Okay. Okay. And input table becomes the starting point. So this is the first step done. The second step is let's go to query and now we're going to connect to a folder. The folder is on our desktop and this is the folder. So we connect it, go to transform data. We need to isolate only Excel files. First use lowercase because the extension is uh, Power Query is case sensitive. So we're going to use text equals and these are our Excel files. We're going to remove other columns. Now we cannot push content column into a function because function accepts a table of a mess structure. The content column at the moment holds Excel files. We need to extract objects from that those Excel files and we're going to use add column, custom column, and we go call this column Excel objects. And the function we're going to use is Excel.workbook over the content column, the second argument, do we want to promote headers? 
is going to be set to false because we promote headers on our own using the custom function. After I confirm, I'll receive a new column in which for each row of the iteration, I will use the binary or the Excel file. And this function will extract all the objects from the Excel file. And doing so for all the rows, I will get in these tables, in these nested tables objects, I will get all the objects coming from all the Excel files. Uh, what I need to do now, I can remove the content column, I can expand the Excel objects one, and now I need to do some uh, cleaning of the data. I know that for a fact that my data resides in the worksheets, so I can use the kind sheet to eliminate all the other objects which are not kind of a sheet. And lastly, I know that uh, if my data is a region, that it, it will not start with the sheet prefix. So I can use this filter to filter out all everything that does not begin with sheet. Okay, now this is the data that I'm interested in. I can keep the item, I can keep the data, remove other columns. And last thing I need to do, I need to go to add column and invoke custom function. Invoke custom function, I will call this uh, cleaned, cleaned data. And the function query will be fx clean and the input table will be a column name called data. So this data holds messy structures. After I confirm all those message structures that you can see in the left table are being cleaned through the custom function and we receive a clean data and that is that's going to happen for all the other regions as well we don't need these message structures and we're going to expand the clean data to receive the final data structure that we need to import inside of the data model always remember to define data types column data types before importing but if you do it then you're set and ready to uh, do your analysis in Power Pivot or in uh, uh, tables if you wish to load this data to the table or in Power BI model if you wish to do uh, if you wish to import in Power BI model. Uh, so uh, I do prefer this kind of technique as opposed to creating uh, as opposed to uh, creating a custom function for from uh, right clicking on the ex uh, on the query and then create a function because this tends to be more flexible, uh, more robust, easier to maintain, and in some cases faster. Uh, hope you liked this video. If you did, please like, uh, hit like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, please post them in the video under the video and see you in the next video. Bye.